From the makers of Spiders Will Eat Your Face comes The Animal Saga, three films including Spiders Will Eat Your Face, Hamsters, The History, and Goldfish Bowl, Death by Glass. All this pet history on Amazon and Big Weasel, Lil Weasel dot club. Hi, my name's Joe. And I'm Mike. And you're listening to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up? The podcast. And this week we'll be reviewing The Dark Tower. Oh, I get it. Because he's black. Hey everyone, and welcome to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up, featuring two guys getting nervous because they should have had more synonyms leading up to their podcast recording and reviewing movies in a weekly podcast form. And thank you to Nick Ocello on Facebook for that synonym suggestion and Savage Burn in mm-hmm. the same time. It's very, very true to how we do things around here at the How Many Fingers podcast. We right. wait to the last minute with just about everything, and then we post and say, we need your synonyms. Right, we we use a new drunk synonym from you guys every single week, and in true Mike and Joe fashion, we wait only until the, hours before we start recording. The last minute crusaders guys, is what mm. we've been calling ourselves for years. <laughs> we almost, oh shit, we've got to do something. <laughs> yeah, we almost missed, or maybe did miss, so many like uh, film festival entries. Just <laughs> and we'd be like, the last minute crusader is right again. <laughs> <laughs> or we would have to pay like 20 times the price You're right, yeah. for the uh, late submissions. We never got an early bird submission, Yeah, if anybody's ever dealt with a fucking film <laughs> festival. Um, but uh, let's let's not procrastinate on this one. Let us delay no further. Oh, I thought you were going to switch it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Betwixt us, Mike Moserino. What's up, everyone? Did I say that right? <laughs> you got it. You got the name you right. You gave me a look and I was like, it, fuck. No, it's, it's, it's a hard one to pronounce sometimes, but you got it. I'm impressed. Right is the guitarist for the reggae rock band Bright Eyed Deliverance. Yes, sir. Very sick. I just saw you guys recently at the Hop Fest. Yeah, uh, yeah. Where, where did we go? Where did I go for that? That was at uh, Zigmeister Brewery. Zigmeister, and, uh, yes, right yeah. across in uh, Hackettstown. Oh, yeah. You guys played awesome a brewery. sick set. Cool. Um, and you guys have a new EP coming out? If I'm... Yeah, should be finishing up uh, end of this month. Uh, release early September. Nice. That's the, nice. the goal. I think September 8th is the goal, but uh, we'll keep everyone updated as we progress. So I have yeah. I have heard all six songs from this EP because I was actually there at one of the recording yeah, sessions. the honor of doing the gang vocals. <laughs> so I can attest that it's fucking sick. Uh, and you'll get to hear my voice in the gang vocals on one yes, of those songs. Of <laughs> I forget what song it was. It was um, We Are Life, I think, right? Did you do gang vocals on that? Yeah, the recognize, respect, observe. <laughs> that was... I forget, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> one of the six songs. Yeah. But uh, that's a good one. So keep an eye out for that one coming out. And uh, I think now with having Mike on, we have completed our Bright Eyed Deliverance collection. We've yeah. had yeah. all four members on the podcast. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, really. So we've got the complete set. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you were also, you were the guitarist for Seas of Wake. Where yeah. We also had Sean Mason <laughs> on here and <laughs> Alex Branchick. T- took a one. So we've got, we've got a few more members uh, before we get the collection of all the Seas of Wake guitars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then you also do solo stuff right now, right? Like covers um, of a... Yeah, I've just been putting out covers and also like some original covers. Just trying to, you know, put mm-hmm. them out on Facebook page and SoundCloud and all that. Nothing too crazy, but I mean, they'll be up there. I have my own music page as well, so... Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, where, where can people find your solo stuff and Bright Eye Deliverance if they're Bright curious? Bright Eye Deliverance. Um, yeah, Facebook, uh, Bright Eye Deliverance, um, YouTube, Bright Eye Deliverance. We'll also have the new EP on uh, Bandcamp and iTunes, Spotify, all that good uh, streaming stuff. Mm-hmm. And then um, solo stuff, I mean, mostly just SoundCloud and my Facebook page, Mike Moserino Music. SoundCloud for as long as it's still up. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We haven't even talked about we're, this on We're this crossing podcast. our fingers for yeah. that because that's where our podcast is hosted. <laughs> yeah, SoundCloud might not be a thing for very much longer. Well, Save us, we'll Chance the Rapper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> I, th- I think they got like a hundred thousand dollars more in investing, like something that I was like, that sounds like a lot of money, but not a lot of money for SoundCloud. Oh, I, I thought whatever. I had heard they no. got like 170 million in funding. 
But that sounds more reasonable. <laughs> I haven't heard anything. I mean, yeah. I think that's yeah. still going to burn still, pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For, yeah I, that was me misspeaking. But and then yeah, they, had, then, uh, they got rid of the former CEO and put someone else new. Someone who had done, uh, <clears throat> he had been, he had helped Vimeo kind of stabilize themselves. Okay. Right. But Vimeo is also a completely different platform, I feel like. So we'll see. Right. I mean, the it's, only, the only it's, similarity... it's definitely something that it's probably the best choice, but again, it's still a stretch. The only similarity I can see is that I don't think there's any way for SoundCloud to be like the premier, you know, music provider oh, in yeah, any way. Okay. Like they, they, they never much like that. Vimeo is not the premier. That's you know, right. they mm-hmm. are. They'll never be the most popular. They're never going to beat YouTube. They just needed to find yeah. a way to yeah. stabilize and make profit. And that's really what SoundCloud needs to do. It's a cool mm-hmm. way to just share a link that's linked up to all your music you have on yeah. SoundCloud. I don't know. It's easy, easy access. I love, I, it, hope. I love it for podcast hosting, so I hope they stick around. Yeah. Same. I think it's the, the But I just cheap... don't know if the user base is there in terms of it's people the... who don't host something there. I was telling Mike earlier, I said we use SoundCloud because it's definitely the cheapest option out there for people who have podcasts. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I hope it does stick around for podcast sake. One time I opened up the podcast app and it says like, oh, we noticed that you do like podcast or whatever. Like, we'd love to call you at some point and like ask you like how we can improve this for podcast. And then I closed the app and I was never able to find it again. (laughs) You probably send them in like a... You could have saved SoundCloud. (laughs) This is before This is why we're here. And I was kind of like, yeah, I'd love to, but my battery's on like 12% and I really can't have SoundCloud running right now. Dude, Maybe That was later. the future of SoundCloud mm-hmm. and you ruined yeah. it. <laughs> I'm sure my phone call, I would have been like, I don't know, uh, get more people to listen to my podcast. Are you guys tied to the color orange? <laughs> <laughs> well. That is, it's such an iconic app too, but mm-hmm. not even app, app and website, but look what happened to fucking Vine, man. Yeah, nothing yeah, is fine. nothing is safe. Nothing mm-hmm. is sacred. I know. No, and it's all about I, the dollars. Honestly, I, I have read their history, and I feel like they've kind of just been mismanaging their money since the beginning. They have pictures of their offices, and they're so luxurious and out of control offices. And I was like, why do we need this for SoundCloud? <laughs> like, <you know. laughs> That's like in uh, Silicon Valley mm-hmm. when yeah. they bring Jack Barker on, and he's like, oh, we need like a koi pond. We need yes. like a personal chef to all the employees <laughs> mm-hmm. and shit. That's probably what SoundCloud was doing. Anyway, this week we're drinking beer. What'd you buy us? And Mike? it's orange, as, as we do every. It's SoundCloud it's orange. orange. <laughs> How appropriate. We're drinking uh, Idipa, <laughs> I, ID IPA from Carton. Id IPA. Yeah, Get it's that right in there. We can't have have super good stuff. Fruit. Nice and nice and hoppy. Um, oh, I guess it's oh it yeah Id IPA. It's supposed to, so there's like a psychologist on the. the oh, can. yeah. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the. Um, the 077. Yeah, I was looking um, for that. I couldn't find that. This one, I forget the exact... Who is this by? Hop flavor, but we'll give it a go. Uh, Carton Brewing. Carton, yeah. Right in... Um, I believe it's Red Bank, New Jersey? Yeah. Somewhere down there off the Atlantic parkway. Hi- Atlantic, Atlantic Highlands. Highlands. Yeah. Uh, Not much to analyze about id IPA. Sometimes you just crave a dank IPA to sip on. Mm. So that's what we made. Multiple hops, multiple malts, and multiple yeasts combined in a way to placate the dank side of our desires... Drink it IPA because it's the dankness. You For those of you who don't know, dank is actually a brewer's term. Was, it, was yeah, it a brewer's term off, before? It was a brewer's term before, yeah. Really? For the hops, yeah. But well, hops I mean, are, hops, are, hops aren't, aren't they in the same, same family, family as, yeah. as cannabis? Yeah. yeah. So I can understand how they're both yeah. dank. Uh, this is uh, pretty dank. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty- it's actually not as hoppy as their double IPA, but it's... It's definitely strong. Yeah, it's, this is drinkable. It's got the, the hop flavor without, like, it's not completely drying my mouth out like a lot of really hoppy beers will yeah. do. Oh, man, yeah. Like, I feel like I could. They, they really mask their beers. They taste like session IPAs where they're like, like you think it's like low in alcohol, but then you drink mm-hmm. like five of them and you can't even walk. <laughs> yeah, I dig this. Yeah, this Two thumbs good. up. Sponsor us, Carton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Two fingers up. Anyway, Joe. Mike. What do you think about that IMDb description? Good call. Because I was about to ask you, but I'm the one that has to read it this week. Checkmate. <laughs> a little off-air joke for y'all out there. Not able for to hear them. who yet. weren't here when it was off-air. Uh, the Last Gunslinger. Oh, this is long. Roland oh DeShane has been locked in an eternal battle with Walter Odim, which is not actually his name in the movie, I don't think. I think it's Walter Pickard or Packard or something like that. Some other P. Anyway, also known as the Man in Black, determined to prevent him from toppling the Dark Tower, which holds the universe together. 
With the fate of the worlds at stake, good and evil will collide in the ultimate battle. <laughs> as only Roland can defend the tower from the man in black. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <sighs> this is a movie, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a movie. Um, I don't even... Is the, the director's name pronounced Nicolaj Arcel? Nicolaj. N-I-K-O-L-A-J. Nicolaj. That might just be Nikolai. Sometimes the J is oh, really? silent. And... Okay. I, I know he's from like, that's like Denmark or something. Yeah, that might, be, that might be Nikolai. All right. I'll go with Nikolai. Um, so the Dark Tower is directed, and yeah, I'll just go into my notes real quick. Um, the Dark Tower is directed by Nikolai Arcel. Nikolai Arcel has directed King's Game, Island of Lost Souls, Truth About Men, and a Royal Affair. The latter was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards in 2013. The Dark Tower, from what I can tell, is Arcel's first uh, non-foreign language film, which, my God, does that make a lot of sense? (laughs) (laughs) This is somebody's first attempt at English. (laughs) Yeah, no, I believe that. (laughs) Um, The Dark Tower was written by Nikolai Arcel, Anders Thomas Jensen, uh, Jeff Pinker and Akiva Goldsman. Uh, the film was based off the Dark Tower novels by Stephen King. And I just have like a, a few snippets of shit I was reading before. Um, efforts to adapt the Dark Tower series for screen have been ongoing since 2007 with periodic reports and official announcements. The project was shelved before the rights were transitioned to a different production company. Development uh, experience starts and stops with various filmmakers and studios at different times, including Universal Films, Paramount, Columbia, TriStar Entertainment, and Lionsgate Entertainment. The adaptation went through three major phases of planning, with uh, J.J. Abrams from 27 or from 2007 to 2009, and then Ron Howard at the helm from 2010 to 2015, and finally the current iteration. Uh, announced in uh, March 2015, produced by Sony Pictures Entertainment. They never miss. It's always a hit with Sony. Um, Have you seen the Emoji Movie? Uh, And Media Rights Capital, with Nikolai Arcel directing and Howard remaining at the producing role. And then in uh, October 2016, the film was screened to test audience with very negative results, with many labeling it as confusing and messy. In response, Sony and MRC spent over $6 million on reshoots to fill the backstory of Idris Elba's character. There was less backstory? (laughs) I don't even know who this guy is. Like, we'll get into it. But, um... By September, yeah, where did that six million go? Yeah, we, uh, they shot the one flashback scene. <laughs> six million. The portals, maybe. <laughs> by September 2016, um, oh, by September 2016, a television series was scheduled to be released in 2018 with Glenn Mazzara as a showrunner. Elba and Taylor are both set to reprise their role as Roland and Jake, respectively. The series has been confirmed to fill the backstory of the film. Um, I don't know if that's still happening. Like, can a movie have such a bad opening that it can prevent, like, (laughs) TV? Um, But anyway... I guess if they're only signed on in in name and they haven't actually started shooting anything, like, Mm -hmm. the studio would probably have the right to be like, yeah, we're canning this contract. Mm. I even, um, what's it called? I think that was the end of my notes. Yeah, that was the end of my notes, but I think even, like, Stephen King was like, oh, like, I think when they do the sequel, they should use this. And I'm like, Stephen, they're not making a sequel. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like he's one of those people that never really objects to any of his adaptations or movies that are adapted from his books. It's just money in the bank, baby. Yeah, I mean, he just sees it as just like, (laughs) yeah, like, make another one. It's just cementing my name Uh in history and bringing more money for me. So, like, yeah, if you want to make a Dark Tower movie, go for it. Right, yeah. And, like, like, there's all these quotes in the Wikipedia of them kind of asking him, like, what do you think about this casting? What do you think about this casting? And for everyone, he's like... Yeah, sure. He could be black. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or like when they casted Matthew McConaughey, he's like, yeah, I never actually really saw a face for Walter. So he could be <laughs> Walter. I think also when you have such like a wide body of work, 
it's kind of just like yeah the dark tower you know it's kind of <laughs> like i mean I, I know he was like clean by the time he was writing these but like there has to be like a lot of them there's like i don't know i was drinking mouthwash during that time <laughs> you know like <laughs> oh man i wrote the shining on a lot of cocaine <laughs> I don't actually know if that was the movie he wrote a lot of cocaine. Maybe it was like Cujo or... I don't know. It could have been a lot of his movies. Yeah, yeah no, he was definitely ones. abusing substances for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, it's... Again, we were talking about this uh, off-camera or off-podcast, um, <laughs> but none of us have really read the source material. No, I mean, I know no. it's a book series and a graphic novel series. Um, yeah, I think just the graphic novel series is adapted from the, the books. Right. And um, I don't know. I don't mind. I, I mean, I've heard a lot of people speak highly about it. I'm sure, as you can tell, I think this movie is fucking terrible. But I'm sure <laughs> the books could be fine. You know, I feel like maybe it could just be a bad adaptation. Um, but I kind of almost prefer going into this movie, like, not knowing the book. I feel like it would further complicate and pollute kind of my opinion going into this i feel like i'm coming out as a very like like we said before you can't judge like oh well in the book like the people with the, the cuts behind their faces or whatever yeah. this is explained here it's like well the movie's got to stand on its own from, what, from what i've heard they tried to cram a whole lot of the books into just like one movie mm. it isn't even really that long from what i remember like it was just no just, it was just like an hour and a half I think, yeah maybe. Like it, it, oh yeah it was a really short was film too yeah. quick like yeah because movies are like tending to be like two hours now and it's like i think mm. just use that other half hour to like help us explain what we're watching here yeah on the other hand i was totally okay with that length yeah i was just like the only thing i can complain is the pacing was great like, <laughs> actually as soon as literally i was like halfway down the stairs in the theater right when the like ending credits started <laughs> like, <laughs> it looks like, like it's about to end yeah, soon. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, and then i've heard that it's uh, again i haven't read the source material but i've heard that it, it's not incredibly true to the source material and they take some liberties with some stuff i'm not totally sure with what i've heard that like, I've, I've heard like that, that quote that i was talking about before with uh stephen king talking about like yeah like i didn't really picture him with a face i guess in the, the the books i don't think he's really like a physical person walter that's like there like he is like a sorcerer i guess but it's more like he's this thing that's around like an entity or something yeah oh you mean like in the books he's not like all right all right all right <laughs> he's, not <doing> that. <laughs> he's not like they don't got chicken where i'm from <laughs> <laughs> that oh, character is a fucking train wreck oh my god like i don't mind um yeah no but but to comment on what, what you were saying before uh i've heard people who actually read it compare it to like if you were to combine all the lord of the rings movies and like the hobbit into like one you know like movie you know all those mm -hmm. books into like one movie that's kind of like the ground that they cover which it doesn't feel like a lot of ground that they cover but well because i think they just have to leave so much stuff out right like, yeah that's why we're so confused watching this right that's i mean yeah i mean i've had problems like that with films in the past like scott pilgrim or whatever where it's like but six books and i also think movie, there's yeah. just a lot of problems with this movie that have nothing to do with the mm -hmm. source material oh my god yeah <laughs> and not even anything to, <coughs> to do excuse me with adapting it into movie form they just have to do with being awful filmmakers <laughs> to an extent what is i mean it is it's so confounding <laughs> that it's like if you didn't know what this movie was or what it was based off of you'd be like what fucking idiot came up with this concept i wrote this script and it's like oh stephen king one of the most beloved authors of all time you know like, yeah i went into it blind and when i saw it was stephen king i was like oh it can't be that bad right like, yeah I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Oh, it could be. Mm -hmm. but yeah, let's 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 sort of go through this from the beginning at all. So I think we can maybe talk about yeah. uh, the the kid Jake Chambers, the most uninteresting kid in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who this movie is marketed to because it's not like it's like sort of it's filmed in like a dark sort of way. Uh huh. It, but it's not dark content there's no cursing there's not a whole lot of like like gruesome violence it like, it's a pg like, it's is it pg or is it pg 13 it almost had like a in a weird way like a goosebumps kind of feel like like a, <laughs> catered towards like a kid's like horror kind of yeah but like, it's like it, it doesn't have 
Like, I can't see kids enjoying No, no, this isn't marketed towards kids No, it's not at all, but it had, like, that kind of goofy Mm -hmm. feel to it. And I can't see adults enjoying enjoying it. And then even, like, uh, the age that the the main character is, Jake Chambers, of, like, 12 or 13, like, Mm -hmm. going through, like, adolescence. Like, it feels like his voice is, like, about to crack in, like, every line. Like, I can't imagine kids of that age enjoying this either. Because it's not even like it's really like a coming of age yeah. movie. Like there's no real growth that this kid goes through as a character. He's just kind of like, I see stuff in my dreams. And then he finds out, I see stuff in my dreams. <laughs> well, just looking around the theater, it was all like 40 year old like <laughs> men. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and is it just me or did this kid definitely go through puberty after they started shooting, but before they started doing reshoots? Like in some scenes, he'd be like, Help. <laughs> you know, like, or he looked like a completely different kid. And then in other scenes, he'd be like, what do you mean you're the gunslinger? You know, which <laughs> just it kind of like it was more near the end that it would kind of like switch between those. Like in the beginning, it was pretty consistent, but they definitely the last like big scene. And, and we'll talk about this uh, when we get into spoiler territory, wherever that begins or ends. Um <laughs> Um, but I feel like that whole scene had to be some sort of weird reshoot, and I'll get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, he's the most uninteresting kid in the whole world. I even was talking to somebody who saw this who was also unfamiliar with the source material, and they were like, is, like, what is his name? Jake Chambers. I Jake. Think. He's like, is Jake, like, this sort of, like, cipher or conduit uh, of, like, like, is he not in the source material and we added him as this, like, cipher or conduit of, like, kind of like, oh, this is, like, like you see through my eyes of, like, what, like, the mid-world looks mm-hmm. like, kind of, like, and it's like, no, he was in the original books. He just seems so plain. I don't know how in the wor- in the book interesting I did some, in the books. Like, light, like, reading just through, like, the first couple sentences of each character's, like, uh, Wikipedia description. And mm-hmm. supposedly in the books, he's the spiritual son of Roland. And Roland is not black in the books. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's just it's just interesting that they wouldn't just make the kid black in this too, if he's supposed to be somehow related. <laughs> they wanted to, to throw in some like um, contemporary social like. Yeah, I just I don't know what's going on with there's there's a lot where I'm just like, this movie does not decide on any kind of like tone is not the right or like I guess visual tone is maybe the right like I th- I think my biggest complaint with this movie is the art direction. Like, there's never any time where you're like, oh, that's like a dark tower scene. Or that's like, there's nothing iconic in the visuals of this movie. Mm -hmm. And everything is just like the costume designs all over the place. The the, Yeah. The characters are all over the place. The villains are all over the place. The settings are all over the place. It's like you had like corporate guys and you had like the Matrix. And then you had like, it was really weird. Yeah. And like you, you think like, and again, I they don't really do any world building. Um, I mean, we know we, we know what modern day New York City and modern day like world looks like and what Jake's world looks like. But then we go into and that's like uh, Keystone World or whatever the fuck they call it. And then there's Mid World, I guess, is where uh, the other world that's taking place is that what it's called? Mid World. I don't fucking know. Something is mid world. But anyway, they're, they're not they're not fucking building that world out. They're not fleshing this world out. It's like all we know is like. They're on a mountain, they're in the woods, and they went to a village. And, like, even the Dark Tower or, like, this lair that uh, Matthew McConaughey's in, it's just kind of, like, all this hodgepodge fucking, like, there's, like, I I know in the source material, they have, like, maps, like the fucking Lord of the Rings books, too. And, like, in this, like, I don't get that. Like They could have really helped themselves out by just, like, picking really incredibly unique locations or if you're not right. going to pick like unique locations, like build unique locations yes. through CG or whatever you have to do. That just whenever they would go to the other world, they'd just be like, "Oh, we're in a forest somewhere, <laughs> or we're in a desert somewhere, or yeah. we're on a mountain somewhere," and it's like it just looks exactly like Earth. So there's nothing for us to be like, "Oh, this is otherworldly." You know, they don't even really like do like. I mean, if they do sky replacement, they don't do it in a way that makes it not look like Earth. It just looks like the sky would look like in that environment if you were pretending it was earth as well it's a great example of one of those movies that's like both too much and it's like too little like there's a ton of like really meaningless exposition that i'm like why are we wasting time with this and then there's also yeah like an entire 
earth that they don't like flesh out you know like it's just like and like i know there's there's probably a reason for that in the books because they have like hints of it like when they're at the one village jake looks at one building and it's it i forget what it says it's like something that hints that it's something from actual earth like his his world i forget what it says it's like a subway station or something Right, or the the carnival rides where Idris Elba's yeah, like, yeah, oh, I don't understand right. these structures. So there, yeah. there, there mm-hmm. is some sort of uh, correlation there between the two, but that's not explained to us. And maybe that is in the like seven books that they tried to cram into right, yeah. one. But like the, again, the movie has to stand on its own. And us watching this movie without having read seven books, I have no idea why those worlds are supposed to be related. And they don't even attempt to like explain. Yeah, I can never figure that out. I the whole time and they're not going to get a chance to make a sequel to explain it either <laughs> so i hate that like action set piece where he's like fighting the otherworldly thing in the dark kind the, of the forest. theme park oh, the theme everything's park. so yeah yeah in in the forest slash theme park because yeah. everything's so dark you don't even like i couldn't tell like whether it was like bad cg and they were kind of like let's dim this like real quick like you know like all the fight scenes take place in like dark hallway dark woods dark <laughs> it, like there's never really we don't yeah. i don't know i really hated the villains in this that's like my other complaint with like the art direction it's part that because like i think that the first monster that he fights is kind of cool but we never see it again so like from like a screenplay perspective like there's no opportunity for him to have any growth like he doesn't struggle fighting it the first time and then defeat it the second time mm-hmm. he just kills it the second the first time and then we never see that thing again and we're just kind of like oh, okay that was something from another world yeah, yeah. like there's just so much stuff that's just kind of like randomly thrown in here because of the device of the worlds being opened and things crossing between worlds i also like that was set in there perhaps as a if the dark tower is destroyed these things will come into all however many of our worlds or whatever and there's never really like a scene in like new york city where like all they really have is like a bush crash in a bush a bush <laughs> crash in real life there's never like those things like running around new york yeah. city which would have kind of been fun like it's it's a little ghostbusters or every mm. other fucking movie with a well that's what i, I think blue it, beam it, in the sky but yeah we'll get more into this later but that's a th- I think this movie is missing is like it, it spends a lot of time in Midworld without really explaining what Midworld is. Mm-hmm. And then when it is in Earth, it is kind of effective. And I feel like they, oh, should, they should have just spent more time on Earth if you weren't willing to go into explaining Midworld in one movie. Like if you didn't have enough time to do all the backstory that much must take place in seven books or however long it is, then just stay on New York City and move the stage here. You know, then you don't even have to come up with some whole new way that midworld looks you can just put everything in new york city i really don't even mind the kind of like idris elba doing like his thor impression where it's kind of like what kind of breed is this hot dog or like you know or, like no, just I, that, doing that's, like oh that's kind of like the funny stuff yeah, that's, that's, like, how, works, that's how he was yeah. like only in new york too like, right, he got yeah. to new york he was like stupid like i don't know like what... <laughs> right, he's like this otherworldly warrior that well, comes yeah, into it's... our world and is Kind of like transfixed by like our modern cuisine as opposed to his post apocalyptic wasteland, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I really like those scenes because I felt like that had the comic relief and the like tone that we needed in the rest of the movie. Like, you don't right. laugh for any other scene in this entire movie, really. Mm-hmm. And the, even the people they try to have be sort of like comic relief, like Jake's friend at one point is so deadpan and flat <laughs> mm-hmm. and yeah. such awful stale delivery of his like lines that like it doesn't work. You're just kind of like, why was this kid cast? But when you have Idris, like, especially when he's in the hospital, and I he's was like, going to say the hospital. Yeah. Do, do your animals still talk here? And then she, mm-hmm. he pulls the stuff out, and she's like, "No, you can't leave." And he hands her a coin, and is like, "Thank you for your services." Like, I could have taken like a whole movie of like stuff like that because it's that's funny to kids. Like, kids would get that because yeah. kids are like, "Oh, mm-hmm. like he doesn't know how hospitals work, and he doesn't know that mm-hmm. animals don't like, talk." And he drank like the, the Coca Cola too, and he's like, "I'll take another one of those oh, yeah. sugars, <laughs> yeah, like the sugar water <laughs> yeah. or whatever." Yeah. Or even like the like uh, party girls like uh, trying to party with him. That was oh, so the, the, the pain confusing. <laughs> it's like this scene is such like again like I really like like again like it's I've I've never seen Thor, but I've seen like that clip from the commercial or trailer where it's kind of like 
oh that was good i'll have another and he smashes like a coffee cup on like a diner floor or whatever like it's kind of what makes thor work it's this that's like, funny yeah warrior from another dimension or planet or whatever mm-hmm. right that comes th- here and it's 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 i mean it's a little bit of a trope we've done it in movies a lot but it works mm-hmm. like to take someone from somewhere else and just introduce them into our society our basic normal society right and he has trouble understanding mm-hmm. everything but like i I like those parts because they weren't necessarily funny, but I knew what they were trying to get at. Where, like, a lot of this movie, I didn't know what they were trying to get at. That part where they're on the fucking, like, New York City subway, and it's, like, a little kid and, like, an otherworldly warrior, like, downing, like, a handful of, like, vitamins... And, like, two college days girls are like, hey, we want to party, too. Yeah. It's like, in what world would that happen? Where it's kind of like... <laughs> it was just like, so that's random. That's, like, a fucking, like, horror scene of kind of, like, this little kid with really, dead parents. I didn't make the connection of them seeing them doing the pills. I thought it was just a thing of, like, oh, Idris Elba is, like, yeah, I th- I think that's what eye I, candy. And they're like, oh, we'll party with you. I think that's what else they were trying to get across. I also didn't like that he uses like the gunslinger like creed to fucking like slut shame them after that which was oh, yeah. so fucking it was it, cringy there, but i did fucking was, laugh at that yeah. <laughs> there was like yeah. even like a guy who was like this like neck beard guy sitting in front of me that like cringed at that he's like mm. there's one part like, the, one guy the face of your father, father yeah. <laughs> the, the, this one <laughs> It's funny, but it's like not in a good way. No, <laughs> this one thing Walter kept saying throughout like the whole movie, I like was cringing at when he would put his hand up and just go stop breathing, and like uh, they would like there's fall no, down. There's no rhyme like, or reason what? to what his powers are. There's no rules. Like he just he's just able to speak things into existence somehow. I guess he's. I mean, it, it, he's yeah. he's literally kind of like Neo in a little bit, where he's yeah. just he is able to alter. The code, so to speak, of whatever planes he's in. He's kind of just God, you know. It, it's 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 a little but bit. But he like, can be shot and die <laughs> with a gun. The delivery method of it, I, I didn't mind. I thought it was a little fresh, just in terms of like you know when he would like walk by the girl and be like, "Hey," but I don't think we had any context for like why does he want to do this stuff? Like <laughs> they haven't really portrayed him as like the devil himself, like kind of have just he just wants the tower to fall right we still didn't really have any motivation and all i was gonna do was cause an earthquake in new york (laughs) matthew mcconaughey (sighs) that's yeah it's his yeah i don't know his character is just like he can tell anyone at any time to do anything and they do it except roland or idris elba and I did, they never really explain why it's kind of like Matthew McConaughey will, McConaughey will just kind of be like, oh, he has his tricks that prevent my tricks and kind of was kind of like, okay. <laughs> like, what did he I keep calling it? it? My magics? <laughs> yes, my magic. <laughs> my magics? <laughs> and he also has like, like not only can he tell anybody to do anything and they'll do it, but he also has like telekinetic powers too. <laughs> and like, he can throw bullets like as if they're he's shooting them like oh, out yeah. of his hands and he can catch bullets with his hands and I don't know is he god or is he a sorcerer I think they say he's a sorcerer at yeah, some yeah. point um but yeah his whole and his fucking dialogue is terrible like <laughs> my I my favorite is before it. he walks to that one portal <sighs> And he's telling like his henchmen, he's like, ha- he's like, if I don't see you before, have a good apocalypse. <laughs> I was just kind of like, oh no. Yeah, like he'll say stuff like that that's really colloquial, but then he'll also have his phrases where he's like, yes. you, know, you mm-hmm. keep denying or you're immune to my magics or whatever. Which mm-hmm. is like that's not a colloquial. Like <laughs> magics is a very like antiquated way of saying that. <laughs> right, and I I also feel like yeah, and like I was joking when i was like all right all right all right kind of but he has that accent the entire time that that's like the kind of like the literally the most laugh out loud scene in this movie is when jake's mom and his stepdad come back to their apartment and he oh, looks like fucking like David Bowie or something at this point. With the apron on? With, it, it, it also has an apron on, and he's like, I hope y'all don't mind if I make some chicken. They don't got no chicken where I came from. It's yeah. like, with that fucking accent, yes, they do. They do have chicken. And then he also looks at the stepdad 
arguably the most like poorly written character in this. <laughs> he's kind of just like, I hate this. He's like kind of like, I just like, want to get this kid out of here so we can fuck. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> Matthew McConaughey says something along the lines. He's like, oh, whatever your name is. He's like, I know you just want to get the kid out of the house so you can be alone with, you know, her or whatever. I was like, wait, is he reading minds now too? From like, <laughs> he just like knew this guy's whole life story. And then before you can explain, he's just like, don't breathe. <laughs> yeah, like, he does the don't collapses breathe. Collapses on yeah. yeah. Which is just like the most <laughs> underwhelming power. Of... And that was also just like weak character writing, I thought, to like have... Because like in the beginning, uh, Jake says something to that effect of like, you know, you, I know you just want me gone so you can have, you know, mom to yourself or however he says it. And like, mm -hmm. that's kind of something that's like, that's a paranoid thing mm -hmm. for a kid to think about. That's a typical thought, but not usually true for a kid to think about their stepdad of like you know you're replacing dad like these are the type of thoughts you would have but it's weird for that to be true like for Matthew McConaughey to read his mind and to not have it be like oh I know you love the kid to have it be what the kid was saying right. like yeah that should there's just there's no progression in any character in this movie at all uh, yeah like the, the kid has no progression like he mm -hmm. he, he sees stuff in his dreams in the beginning of the movie and it all turns out to be true and he's right and mm -hmm. there's no even any scenes of like like in the beginning he, he doesn't have trouble standing up for himself he fights the bully so we don't even have an yeah. opportunity there to like you could have had a scene at the end of the mm -hmm. movie where it's like now that i just fought off this guy who like you know wanted to destroy the entire universe yeah i can stand up to my bullies because he already did it in the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. he's really just had all his beliefs affirmed but we don't have any scenes of him like of anyone else finding out that what he was saying was true like we don't have his therapist who was doubting him or i mean he spoiler alert but his mom and step uh father get killed so mm -hmm. we don't have scenes yeah. of them like finding out that what he was saying was true so there's never any like justification or like redemption arc for this kid yeah. it's just kind of like he is who he is in the beginning of the movie he believes some stuff <laughs> that he's seeing and then it's all true at the end of the movie and that's really the only arc there is for this kid and yeah. then for, for roland too like he ha wants to get vengeance for his father mm -hmm. but the thing that he wants to do to get vengeance is to to kill Walter and that's what he needs to do for any it's not like he has to change his plan because he's learned something like he still gets to get vengeance and he also gets to avenge Jake's parents and save the universe all at the same time like there's no he, he doesn't have to change anything from when he was stuck in his like selfish plan ways to begin with yeah and the, I, uh, I don't want to go on too big of a tear but my biggest theory about this film is that it's written by an actual fucking child because like and and i don't even mean that in the sense that the writing is bad because it is the writing is bad um but like the pre yeah the writing is bad because i mean yeah again look at the dialogue and like the premise of the movie is just like jake's dream which is like good guy is good and he do cool trick with gun and bad guy is bad because he wear dark color clothes you know it's, yeah. it's not even that it's like it's written by an actual child because it's it feels like stuff i'd write in early grade school where it's like very heavy on childlike escapism kind of where it's kind of like it's very heavy on parents just don't understand like two or adults for that matter and it's kind of like Mom doesn't believe you. Dad doesn't believe you. Um, even though there's fucking apocalyptic earthquakes happening all over the world and Jake's having like kind of dreams that counteract with this, obviously you're not going to be like, um, obviously you're not going to be like, hey, like maybe that shit is real because it's like a child's dream, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, it's just, it's a little ridiculous. Like his dad died and there's these fucking scary earthquakes happening and they're kind of just like, um, I don't know. There's literally like any scene you pick, I can be like a child wrote that kind of like where he meets um the gunslinger or whatever. There's like five seconds where the gunslinger is realistic and he holds him like off a cliff by like one hand. He says, I don't give a fuck about children. Yeah. He's like, I just saw my fucking dad die and I'll fucking drop you off this cliff because I think you're an illusion. And he's like, I am not. And he's like, okay and then every <laughs> scene after that is kind of like he's like wow like we both almost died but you almost touched my pistol and saved me 
you did a really great job. I'm so proud of you. Like it was like really, it was it's it sounds like fanboy fiction of like somebody who wants to hang out with the gunslinger or kind of or like yeah. when he wakes up in the middle of the night and like walks over to like the hallucination or whatever and like almost gets them killed again and Idris Elba essentially gets like stabbed and fucking like mutilated and like infected. He's like, "Hey bud, you're really brave out there and like I'm real proud of you too." <laughs> you did a good job. He's kind of like like that's not how I think the gunslinger would actually act. He like well, and they just they they can't even do like this movie could would do really well if it would almost just use some more tropes like the the trope of like the kind of like hardened guy who's not good with kids like that's what Idris Elba needed I don't to like be you, in this. But I'm gonna follow you, kind of. That's yeah. what I wanted. <laughs> Like it, 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 there should have been more disagreement between them. He should have been. There should have been more of the kid. Like the kid, they they didn't have the courage in the screenwriting to make him a little unlikable. Yeah. Terms, like he should have been mm-hmm. more whiny. He should have been annoying to Idris Elba to the mm-hmm. point where Idris Elba is just like, I don't fucking care. Like we just need to get here so I can kill Walter, and you're just gonna help me do that. I don't care about you whining about missing home or wanting candy bars or stupid shit like that. Like right. there was no dichotomy between these two characters. This kid's a fucking trooper. He doesn't need water. He doesn't need food. Like <laughs> yeah, there's the one scene in the beginning where he needed water. He like chugged uh, the yeah, gunslinger's yeah, yeah. flask. And, uh-huh. like, but he the gunslinger came off as like a father figure. Like he did. Besides too the, early and immediately. Besi- yeah. Besides the first scene where he pulls the gun and hangs him off the cliff, he's like a father figure after that. Oh, and that's fine yeah. later. Like that sh- that should happen later. That should be the progression. It's a relationship that develops. Yeah. But it happens right off the bat like as mm-hmm. soon as they they he realizes that he's drawing these things that are true he's just kind of like okay yeah and like just i'm proud of you like you did a good job there like <laughs> grabbing that gun <laughs> you can which even is like go- again that's another opportunity like if you have him be h- afraid to fight the bullies in the beginning and then in that scene you have that scene and he doesn't do anything he just sits there and idris mm-hmm. elba gets hurt because of it then mm-hmm. you have another scene where you can bring back those cool animal alien things again because there should be some kind of progression there yeah. and then through what he's taught him from this long journey they've been on you know maybe after he's taught him the gunslinger's creed for that pointless scene that we got there then he maybe makes a move and stands up for him and grabs the or tries to grab the gun or something and is able to save idris elba and then we have some kind of progression with these characters and some point to some of the stuff we've been watching in this movie <laughs> yo we don't i don't know I can even I can like literally go into any scene, like especially like the chicken scene. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap <laughs> back around to this kind of a fucking child wrote this, like a child wrote all of the characters, kind of like like mean evil guy who wear dark clothes and cool good guy who do <laughs> trick with gun. Um, but like my favorite is before he kills the mom, uh, Matthew McConaughey goes like, "Don't you feel bad that you would like?" didn't pay more attention to your son and his cool drawings and his dreams he was telling you about but they're actually true and she's like what and he's like don't breathe <laughs> like, yeah. it's kind of like that's how you're fucking it's kind of like it's like a little kid kind of like almost writing like like a suicide note like don't you wish you paid don't more you wish attention you believe- <laughs> I wish my parents made more attention to me in high school. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. The, the stop breathing scenes, I just couldn't. It was I just, couldn't deal with. It was such like little kid wish fulfillment. Is mm-hmm. this entire movie? It's kind of like the little kid's never really in danger, and he never goes through any struggle besides like, besides like this is my real life. It seems like it's the kid who was who did have a dad die and who is being bullied in school and having a hard time. And then from then on, he just fucking writes like his own wish fulfillment. It's kind of like in the beginning of the movie, I was really on board and I said, Oh wow. I didn't know this about the books, but like this is all perhaps an interesting metaphor about how this kid is dealing with trauma or loss or loss of a parent or whatever. Nope. It's just a fucking t- <laughs> fantasy story. It's it's just kind of like when he's in like the therapist office and he says like, "Hey, like almost everything you're telling me about these dreams is like the embodiment or the, you know, manifestation of how your father died and like, you know, how you're handling all this." And he's like, "Are you sure this has nothing to do with the, your dad dying very recently?" And the kid's like, "Nope." And that's it. That's the fucking movie. It's like it's we start- never reoccur yeah, that father yeah, theme like yeah. it. Well, except know. for the one scene in the woods where the father comes back yes, as, like, yeah. a, the mm-hmm. demon figure or whatever. That's very but, true. Yeah. I also don't know why they didn't have, like, that maybe conversation could have been a little bit delayed in the movie. Like, 
you know, again, if you're going to go the route that I think the movie should have gone, where there's this kind of divide between these two characters, they're having trouble getting along, and uh, the gunslinger just wants to use Jake to help him find Walter, because mm-hmm. he has some idea of where he is. Hey, gunslinger, fucking look at the beam in the sky that goes from the dark tower to <laughs> yeah, the just, fucking place they're yeah, shooting exactly. at him, and go there. <laughs> I thought about that, the first scene where you see that It's happen, a fucking like... map in the sky that happens yeah. like three times a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and was it? It's like children's screams. Is that what it is? That like is taking down the tower. I don't know. That's the, what I the, the, the psychic, helpful psychic tech- children. I mean, I guess they're just sucking brain power or something out of them. The, 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 I the, thought it was the screams too. I thought it was like Monsters Inc. or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Power, <laughs> yeah. The beam that they're firing the dark tower. What is the text at the beginning? That's like they say. There's a dark tower that oh, like yeah, that protects said, like yeah. all of our worlds, and that a child's mind is the only thing that can destroy it. It's kind of like, why is that well-known information <laughs> that a child's mind is what can destroy, like, the... Again, there's so much stuff in this movie that's just kind of like, yeah, there's a dark tower and it holds the worlds together and you're just kind of like, cool, Yeah, I or, guess. Like... Or the revisiting of the kind of like, nope, has nothing to do with my dad. Like, they don't even revisit that and kind of try to cover that with, like, I just underwent extreme trauma with my dad fucking burning alive, kind of. And that's why I have the extension above other kids of like mm-hmm. power in my head or something. Yeah. When they go back to his dad, like like I'm saying, like if if you're gonna have if you did what I think they should have done in terms of have these characters be at odds for their journey and trying to just achieve some same end goal, and then to have them relate to each other. I mean, they have this shared thing where like his dad has died Mm -hmm. and then uh idris elba the gunslinger's dad has just recently died and they can kind of like relate and bond over that and like that should have been like a a moment later in the movie that's kind of like an emotional climax of like you know some scene where like yeah fucking i know too my dad just died i can relate to you over that but instead we get it in this kind of like meaningless scene with the the one monster coming through the portal and they just kind of like really gloss over it where like the gunslinger is like whoever you saw there that's no person that wasn't actually whoever you saw i won't ask any names i won't ask you to get into it but (laughs) and that was really the last thing you hear about any of his parents oh yeah so after that scene yeah that like really important character defining detail really besides he's got a really high shine (laughs) <laughs> like, you know, oh, like, I forgot that was the term for mm-hmm. shine. Oh, his shine is off the charts. <laughs> oh yeah, because shut um, up, because Walter could sense his shine. I was like, that's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> I can just hear like the the, the pedophile from Family Guy <laughs> saying that. Here <laughs> <shine. laughs> The other thing is, if we if we're gonna follow up that kind of, um, you know creature from outside of our worlds or whatever um another scene that just bothers me really quick is when he draws in the sand kind of a circle and he like divides it a few times and it looks like very similar to all the drawings he does of all the children sitting in a circle kind of and projecting like the beam or whatever and i was ready for idris elba to be like yeah that's how they position the children to shoot like the beam he's like that's actually a map of the universe. And I was like, fuck me. All right, I'm not going to try to make sense of this. But anyway, Idris Elba gets fucking, like, stabbed through the shoulder chest by one of these uh, beings from Demons outside of the, the universe or whatever. And he's really fucking struggling. Like, he's really, like, I, all I could imagine is they're setting this up so that he's really sick. And the last thing he does before he dies is he's going to kill um walter or whatever but and we even go into like one of like the you know mid-world like uh you know towns and they speak to one of their seers or whatever and they're not able to fix him at all but then like they go to keystone world our world and they're like, here's some vitamins and painkillers. And he's like, I'm healed. <laughs> I was I was on death's door, but oh, I'm healed now. The, the like, one, yeah. That scene when they saw the seer and he, they, they've said to him, they're like, there's nothing we can do for you. Just lay down and get some rest. Like, right, yeah, too- yeah. Death <laughs> like, is soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, man. <laughs> there's a lot with this movie that's like, 
in terms of like mm -hmm. going back to this again because it's still my biggest complaint with this like the art direction in terms of like they have the one scene when he goes to the portal and it's like an old abandoned house but in it is like these computers that have like terminals from like the 80s where it's just like the green screen and like that old 80s computer font and whatnot and like that's one aesthetic and then they go to like Midworld, and it's like this like west world like western frontier type aesthetic where you know they're like they've got like water wells and like mills and stuff and you know they're eating crappy shit on like metal plates and they have horrible like medical technology and then the other half is like middle earth fantasy at the same time like the one animal that comes through or then like there's even like a ton of different types of villains like you have matthew mcconaughey and a bunch of his like goons who are like pretty good looking people in weird nondescript costumes like yeah, what was the one girl the has a girl yeah. yeah she has like a pretty like like tight fitting like uniform and then the other guy is just kind of like in like a flannel and like messed up hair and like yeah hey what's up i'm working on computers like there's nothing <laughs> like why don't these people have like a uniform or something to like mm. And if not, then just explain to me why they all look so fucking different, like, in this universe. And then you have the skin shifters, which I guess part of that is, like, they look crappy and then they take the skin of somebody else on. Yeah, Again, sure. not really explained. Just have to kind of yeah. infer that from context. Mm -hmm. So, like, the skin shifters have, like, this, like, horror movie vibe to them. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you have, the like, the, the weird dog thing coming from the portal. And then you have, like, orcs that attack, like, the middle world. Yeah. So there's just like there's like a million different types of like enemies in this rather than just having like one defined like these are the bad guys. And there was also that, that, that rat about. guy too. I remember at one point yeah. Walter was like, Oh, put on a new skin or something. Oh like yeah, that. I think he's one I think he's like one of the skin shifters before like a, a face or something is put okay. on, I guess. I guess that's their natural form. Like rat but again, people, not not really explained yeah. too well. <laughs> and there's just too much like there's just too much to focus on in this movie. Like it needed some point of just like here like this is what the enemies yeah. look like this is what midworld looks like it's different because of these you know iconic things that you can look at i've also heard that um in the source material the books kind of um walter's kind of like children torture center <laughs> or whatever, whatever with like it, it's more fantasy than it is like they're all on like fucking computers or whatever and they're just kind of like typing um like it's it's less i don't know why they decided to again like you were saying like with, with like the green screens like in the old like wooden house which doesn't even look like it's in fucking brooklyn it looks like fucking monster house is mm -hmm. just on a street in brooklyn <laughs> they do like a shot from behind they do a shot like at him looking at the house right like pointing towards his face and i said Oh, that's New York behind him. And then they do a shot behind him looking at Monster House. And I said, they're like no longer in New York. They're on like a lot somewhere now. Yeah. Like it's just, it was so obvious. And then the house tries to eat him. I don't fucking know yeah. what that I was. was yeah, it's a whole part of like our direction that's just out of nowhere. Uh -huh. Wait, they said somewhere, I think, that there was like a demon protector or something of the portal. Yeah, they, they do explain to some extent but where still, it's kind of it like no sense he had shine, so he's able to protect himself against it. Mm -hmm. And no human could have passed that. But it was kind of like... Well, explain the, the, the house eating people, like the hardwood floor. Part of what I do understand is not the right word because i don't understand anything about this but partly from what i've heard loosely about the source material is that it is sort of just kind of like stephen king easter eggs like there's yeah stuff in the dark tower that's pulling from like the stand and a bunch of his other stuff all kind of like oh remember this from this and i think that's what the whole sort of like different universes different worlds thing is supposed to be is like one world is probably from one book one world gotcha. is pulling stuff from another book so if you've read all those books and The Dark Tower, some of this stuff maybe makes more sense. That's the only sort of excuse I can maybe make for it. Mm -hmm. But I haven't, so it doesn't. And the movie has to stand on its own, so it doesn't make sense to people watching the movie why the house is trying to eat someone. Yeah. Or why there's orcs in one scene and like a demon dog in another scene. And then just weird <laughs> like metrosexual like magicians in other scenes. This, I mean, what was the the budget was 60 million dollars that's not a lot for a film not really for like a major. The, yeah for for something like this so i can understand parts of that 
I don't know though. It's it's really hard to have sympathy for this film. I mean, we're getting close to to the end of the podcast. Let's talk about like essentially the last scene. Oh uh, yeah. The battle so, scene, right? Yeah. There's so much that happens. I mean, <laughs> Jake, there's a really underwhelming scene of kind of Jake discovering like Oh, my stepdad's dead. <laughs> and then all and then all of a sudden there's a burn mark on like my carpet and it's like, that must be mom. <laughs> and then you just elbows like, don't look at it. They'll see your shine. And I was like, no, do, well, can you look? I'd like to. She died off screen. I'd like to have some sort of context here. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because they never showed her like dying. It was just the stepdad, right? Yeah, yeah, and it was essentially like Matthew McConaughey, like, now it's your turn mm-hmm. to die, cut to eat yourself, but like, it was just kind of like, <laughs> like, in another, in a better movie, she would have been, the mom would have been like a great, like, emotional crux of this movie, but in this movie, she's just kind of like, I have five minutes of screen time, ah! like, you know, <laughs> I think it was also, it was like kind of unnecessarily cruel to kill her, I thought, because we yeah. already have a movie where he's mm-hmm. dealing with like still in the throes of mourning about his father <laughs> who yeah. died as a firefighter, mm-hmm. which also like going back to like the beginning, like why are kids bullying him when like, it's probably pretty no, like, <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure kids don't bully kids whose dads were firefighters and yeah. died in the line of duty in mm-hmm. New York. Like, in New York, they fucking love firefighters yeah, and yeah, police yeah. officers. Like, he, that kid would be, like, benefiting so much financially and just, like, there'd be, like, benefits and shit set up for this kid. Like, he would probably have, like, an okay life. It would be free from bullying, I would think, after a father dying in the line of duty. It's very like, like the New York ah, Fire your dad died of 9-11. Kind of like, you know, like, it's kind of like, who would do that? That's so fucked up. He also doesn't, he doesn't look like a nerdy kid either. Like, no. he's a pretty, like, average, yeah. good-looking, like, kid for, like, 12 or 13. Like, and he almost fucks that one woman in the village. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird fucking... <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that also went like, nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of like... The, the blonde girl that he, like, saved yeah, in the, uh-huh. when the village was getting torn down, yeah. She's like, I have a fucking husband, but yeah, I'll vice for you, too. <laughs> yeah, and he just comes out of nowhere, takes her away, and then that's uh-huh. he's like... He's like, that's another part that's definitely like, oh, a kid wrote this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then the really hot girl at the dinner table looks at me. <laughs> and she thinks I'm hot, and I touch her boob. <laughs> And then the mayonnaise comes out of my penis. (laughs) You remember that video? (laughs) Uh, I have a 30 year old husband, but yeah, I'll fuck this 12 year old. (laughs) It's like basically how it ends. Like, it's like her husband comes and he's like, he's like a full beard. He's like, we gotta get out of here. And he's like, "Mm." oh, I think I thought it was her dad. (laughs) He was young enough to be like, again, they don't clarify. Yeah, no, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows? Um, but she's definitely an older, like, woman yeah. than Jake. I forget what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, it's just ridiculous to not only have his dad be dead. It's, like, that's fine. Like, that's that's a typical crutch for a movie to have of, like, a dead parent. And that's, like, sort of, like, motivation for the movie. <laughs> Except he doesn't really use it as motivation. And then his mom dies and his stepdad dies, too. Like, and there's not even mm-hmm. any, like... Like, he doesn't even really think about his stepdad dying. Like, it would have been almost sort of nice to have a scene of, like, I should have treated my stepdad better. But then again, before his stepdad dies, we have proof that his stepdad just wanted him gone so he could fuck his mom. It's like like this one-dimensional character who's only hell-bent on just fucking this guy's mom. (laughs) I can't just get a hotel room somewhere. I need to ship this kid away. It's like they wrote it about the, the gunslinger, so the kid falls in love with him and then goes away with him so they're like all right now we gotta kill off everyone he loves so he can go live with the gunslinger yeah, that's what it seems like is justification <laughs> so that the movie can end with them walking through the portal and going away oh my god the, the, i like literally kind of laughed out loud at that like like they're both eating the hot dog and it's a nice moment <laughs> and i was expecting the gunslinger to be like i gotta go continue doing what i do and you're not cut out for the world that i live in and he's, but instead, Idris Elba like takes a bite of a hot dog, and he's like, "There's nothing for you in this world anymore." 
<laughs> Everyone's dead. <laughs> you should come back to the hellscape post-apocalyptic <laughs> world where I live, where they don't have running water or medication. <laughs> and he's like, really? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, okay. And then they walk into like a nondescript like Chinese restaurant and then a bunch of like lights glow and it's like credits. And I was like, oh no, that was <laughs> that's, that just the movie has like no restraint in certain areas. I feel like that's an area where like I think a better writer might have been like, you know, maybe he does go away and then he is sad that, you know, his friend Roland has left and then we'll do some kind of like wink towards the end of like, right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. Roland will come back for him or maybe Roland will call for him at some point. Right. But it's yeah. almost just too knowing to be like, yeah, you want to come with me? Sure. Let's go. OK. Walk through the door. Like, it's just too intentional of a setup for a sequel. that's not going to happen. Like the now. one time you see him happy in the whole movie, too, is when the gunslinger is like, come with me. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Remember my world post fucking like civilization where you almost died multiple times because there's fucking beings from other dimensions where 20 year old women want to fuck 12 year olds (laughs) it's a dream world buddy (laughs) or fucking demons try to kill you like disguising themselves as your dad and (laughs) come back to that world with me Okay. There's nothing for you here. Again, it's the cool, <laughs> it's the most depressing line of the whole movie. Yeah, the cool childhood fantasy. That's what it is. Uh, we also we didn't have like any realization of an arc for Jake's like psychic ability. Like he just kind of like he the seer is like, oh, you can be a psychic. Here, I'm going to talk, and then they do like the anamorph like mind talking. Like, oh, yeah. Tobias, can you hear me? <laughs> In brackets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tobias. Oh, I, I, I love the I love the obvious scene when he's talking to the um. What's it called? A person when they're reading each other's minds in that mm-hmm. one scene, and he just looks over at the gunslinger, and she's like, and he's like, she's reading my mind, or like I'm reading her mind. Like, like come on, like it's so obvious. Like, like, why do you have to say it? it out <laughs> they have like a training montage too, where gunslinger's showing him how to shoot the pistol, and then at the end he goes, "That's my power, though. You should stick to reading minds." Like after he like nails like a bunch of cans, and I was like, "There's not. We're not gonna revisit this." He's like. That's my power, though. You know, like, and it's like the the whole, they go through this whole process where he's teaching how to shoot his gun just to end up to being like. Well, he of says, like, you, you like, should stick to, like, the psychic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just, just to teach him, like, the mantra of, like, gunslingers. Which, kind of, yeah. why does he need to know that if he's not going to be a gunslinger? Right. And then, like, again, we don't, like, he finds out he can be a psychic, and then there's not any kind of, like, training. Or, like, he's not bad at it. Like, he just knows how to do it the moment she tells him he can do it. And then mm-hmm. he does it for the rest of the movie. Like, again, there's just there, there needs to be some kind of progression somewhere in this movie where someone struggles with something and then they overcome that struggle and aren't able to do it. Like, even with, like, Roland's sort of, like, uh, character arc, like, his is almost the worst. Like, I was explaining before, like, he, he wants to go kill Walter and we sort of have, like, a, a minor speed bump where... Uh, Jake is kind of like, well, you just want to kill Walter for like the wrong reasons at one point. And it's like, it doesn't do anything to der- derail that plan at all or even delay it. Like, no, yeah, he still ends up getting to and needing to and doing the right thing by going to go kill Walter in the end. Like, and I don't really understand that whole, like, it would have been better if it's the movie started out with when we first see Roland, like he's, I mean, he is kind of like a hermit wandering, but he's wandering with a purpose. Like if he was just like an actual hermit that had given up on fighting at all and kind of like a like a drunken more like character like who couldn't fire the gun like he used to and he has to sort of through his relationship with this kid maybe you know goading him on and giving him encouragement is able to pick the gun back up and be a gunslinger again but instead we just get him he still has the gun can still shoot it like a fucking badass for some reason, he's not a gunslinger. He's not a gunslinger. He's not a gu- o- only in just like terminology yeah. or like title is he not a gunslinger. And again, anymore. like the, it's he like, has all the qualities of a gunslinger, but like yeah. And the, the the person that he wants to go get revenge against, it directly helps the gunslinger cause to go kill that. But they act like it's some really selfish thing that he wants to go kill Walter. Like yeah. everybody wants Walter dead. That helps everybody. <laughs> To kill Walt, like no one would be like, "Oh, you want to go kill like Voldemort?" Like that's really selfish of you, Harry. Like <laughs> that's what you have to do is kill Voldemort. There, yeah, there's an entire battlefield of people dead who are trying to fight like this guy, like yeah. that they show in the very beginning. Like there should have been some kind of struggle with him, like learning how to shoot again, 
or shooting for the right purposes or something like that. And like it, it also like it, it, they have this whole creed that's kind of the theme for the entire movie of like, you know, I don't kill with my mind or I don't kill with whatever I kill with my heart. And like that would be more powerful if his initial mission in this movie was something that wasn't directly related to that. Like if he was trying to kill for some actual selfish reasons rather than like wanting to kill with your heart. Like that's wanting to kill with purpose. And he's not just wanting to go blindly kill people in the beginning of the movie. He wants right. to go kill someone who killed his father. And by killing him, he's going to help the entire like mid world and all these like worlds that are connected somehow. So it's just, it's very muddy and confusing in that way. Like they, they try to set it up like he's some like lost character, but he seems like he's doing pretty all right in the yeah. beginning of the movie. <laughs> like, yeah. He's not morally bankrupt in any way. He's not, you know, drunk and, you know, forgetting to practice his guns and stuff and being sloppy in any way. He <laughs> seems like a pretty badass guy right from the beginning. And he's still a badass guy at the end. And there's no point where he learns something that helps him. Like the first time he finds Walter and faces with him, he kills him. Mm-hmm. And the first time he faces any of the things in this movie, he kills them. There's never anything yeah. where he like fights someone and struggles, barely gets away. And then the second time he's like, oh, remember that thing you told me, kid, because we have this weird relationship. Now I'm going to use that and you taught me something. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to kill him. What was your guy's favorite like set piece like in this movie? Are there set like, pieces in this movie? <laughs> well, or, or, or just... Woods. Or just... Scene, Desert. New York scene. City. I... I would say, but I saw this in the trailer and I was just kind of like, by the time I saw the movie, it was kind of like, it's cool, but like, I've already seen this in the trailer is when um, one of the dark people or whatever the fuck they're called. It, like, His name which, is Idris Elba. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he has like an army of like the dark men yeah, or something. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they, they cut again, not explained. You already went over that. But they're car- one of them is carrying Jake away, and Idris Elba is really in the throes of death from being infected, even though all he needs is vitamins. Um, and he kind of, like, starts to breathe slow, and he can kind of, like, do selective hearing, and then he concentrates, and he shoots, and it goes through a window, a wall, oh, yeah. a plant, and then it shoots him, and I was like, that's pretty cool, like, that's more one like i wish there were more concentrated scenes of like what and that's the thing that's the thing that's more effective if in the beginning of the movie Mm -hmm. he can't fucking use his gun because he's fucking drunk or sloppy Mm -hmm. or just out of training and you know or just doesn't care and you know hasn't used his gun because it reminds him his father or some some shit Mm -hmm. like that like any things that i could write in my goddamn sleep for this movie because i'm not a child um, so, so then like when you have a scene like that that's more effective because that's kind of the feeling that I feel like they're trying to emulate from other movies where it's like it's almost like he's remembering his powers in that scene and he's able to do something really impressive without looking right. and he's almost kind of like surprised when he looks and he's like oh I actually fucking like hit that guy mm-hmm. and like Jake is really surprised in that scene too and that scene would be so much more effective if he wasn't like this lethal killer already from the beginning and then also the, the, the scene where he fights Walter the same thing like that would be more meaningful if he had been like weak in the beginning of the movie or like just less of a cool guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that, that ending scene is just kind of like, <sighs> I guess Walter kidnaps Jake and takes him to the circle room, which he says, all I need is Jake is to take down this tower and release the bad into all these different universes. And I can rule the universe or whatever. That's his motivation. And Jake, who is the main character of this film, uh, the Idris Elba is just kind of the sidekick. Like, he doesn't really get anything at the end of this film. It's more of Idris Elba's struggle to kind of overcome Walter. And you just have them fighting on these opposite sides of a portal. I, I... this is the scene where I feel like this was a reshoot. Like, it's kind of, like, all done in, like, a dark hallway. And it's kind of, like, you have, like, just Jake kind of, like, struggling on one side. And then you have, like, um... And again, I, I feel like maybe Jake had some sort of more of a come up. Like, at the end, I don't know. I, I can't ex- exactly explain it now that I'm trying to iterate it. But it's it's not... Or articulate it, but it's not coming out. Um... But yeah, he ends up, he thinks that he kills Idris Elba, Walter, or Matthew McConaughey, mm-hmm. 
because he's fucking stopping glass and he's throwing rocks at him or whatever all of his powers that have no rules in this universe (laughs) and then idris elba shoots two shots after the kid after jake and he are sort of talking about the gunslinger's creed or whatever they're both saying it out loud or maybe it's just idris elba but jake jake through psychic powers reminds Mm -hmm. uh, yeah roland of the gunslinger's creed but then he does something, Idris Elba does something that like doesn't make sense in our world with physics where he shoots no. like a bullet and it takes longer to get there than the f- second bullet he shoots kind of. Like it's kind of like dong 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 dong. Like it was just it was a very well, conf- he like he like shot one at him and uh-huh. he blocked that and then he shot one at like this steel beam or whatever and then it like right. bounced off and like hit him. The, like, the physics was, were just yeah. like really out of whack. I was just kind of like okay and like I feel like that piled on to is Idris Elba does he have a magical gun? At some point they're like you know the gun that Idris Elba shoots is actually the smelted version of king arthur's sword or something they say that like it's not like he's shooting magic bullets either because they rob like the the ammunition store yeah it's just kind of like it's also after he frees jake (laughs) idris elba does like a very like in james bond like specter like when Daniel Craig just kind of shoots, like, after he leaves, like, this layer, he kind of just shoots, like, a few bullets at this, like, layer, and then it just, like, explodes. Like, like, that, it's just kind of, oh, like, he shoots, a like, bizarre... the, 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 that I didn't understand. Like, I, I, part of it is, I just can't remember it, but does he pull Jake through before he shoots at it? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But he, you just so then he just kills shoots... all the kids that are there? Because <laughs> he shoots at, like, the energy core reactor, yeah, yeah. and the whole... Right. Excuse me. Triangle mm-hmm. pyramid thing blows up, so it's like all those kids are just fucking dead. <laughs> but he doesn't even <laughs> show like. That, yeah. He doesn't even unless show he pulls. Video. I can't remember if he pulls all the kids. No, he through. doesn't. No, yeah. I didn't. Because I don't even that. remember him pulling Jake. If he does, it's not clear. I don't. But the way it shows him shoot, like I, I didn't even see that it was like the the reactor. Maybe you're right, but like it just, that's just my word for it. it. It's just a glowing ball that he oh, shoots, I, it, and then the entire it, thing just starts. He, when he off. shot, it just kind of like looks like it like bounces off some metal, and it's like good enough, <laughs> like fucking fireball <laughs> kind of like all the time. That'll do one it. Ball, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and they just kind of walk away. But yeah, yeah. Again, they don't they don't even explain. Like, they, they could have had some kind of exposition scene. Again, this would be dumb, but, I mean, my advice would be just not to make this movie in the first place. Mm-hmm. But you could have some scene somewhere of, like, oh, you know, this it's like an impenetrable fortress. You'll never get in there. And the, the only way to disable it is this one reactor core, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. So then when he does shoot it, at one point, it makes sense that the entire thing is going to just blow up. Or even, Let's just pour architecture uh-huh. to death. Yeah. Or even fucking. It's not even like hidden, like it, like in Star Wars. It's like at the actual center of like the Death Star. Yeah. And you have to fly through all like these exhaust ports to get to it. It's just in the room that they all are in, working in all the time. Like <laughs> someone could just accidentally like kick a stone into it and blow the whole thing yeah. up. Or even like Walter, where it's kind of like at some point they should have been like, and if you shoot him in the heart, but instead it's just kind of like. He's catching bullets, he's throwing them, he has telekinesis where he's stopping glass and rocks and everything, and then he just shoots him in the heart and he's like, oh, fuck! <laughs> like, my <laughs> bullet's my only weakness. <laughs> it's like it's well, this otherworldly it sorcerer. Like, like, it was supposed to be, like, outsmarting him in some way. I did mm-hmm. think that scene was all right, even though the physics don't make a whole lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just kind of cool to, like, yeah, like you know, he's Walter's getting confident, he knows he can stop all the bullets, so if you shoot a bullet at him, he's going to focus on that bullet and not think about the bullet right. going to ricochet mm-hmm. off yeah, something yeah. else. And it was kind of a sort of semi-clever, although bending the truth a little bit way. Right. And, to and... defeat him with his magics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to get into some uh, fingers? Yeah, I'm probably ready for that. All right. Uh, what do we usually do before the fingers? Like the tomato meter and the average rating? Yeah. On a uh, Rotten Tomatoes, oh, I really love this uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my god, that was the best part. I watched. The film has an approval rating of eighteen percent based on one hundred forty-eight reviews. Oh, an... it's it's at sixteen now. Oh, I okay. saw it at sixteen when I yeah, looked sixteen percent now. Uh, so probably more reviews then, with an average rating of four point one out of ten. 
I don't know. Are you it, looking at it now? Is it? Yeah, like, it's just 16 with just a solid 4 out of 10. With, okay. The site's critical consensus reads, go then, there are other Stephen King adaptions that needs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is in the book. I, I don't think they have that in this movie at all, but that's like one of the more iconic lines from the series is, go then, there are other worlds than these. Mm-hmm. Which Jake Chambers says, which doesn't sound like something Jake Chambers would say in this movie, so maybe that's why. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> go then! <laughs> we do we have it coming out very soon so if you're gonna see a stephen king film or adaptation don't see this one please (laughs) i don't think many people did no yeah yeah. audience score was 57 percent liked it with an average rating of 3.4 out of 5 um oh boy but yeah i'll go first if you want because i have really said everything that i've really wanted to say I really went on a tear there at some parts. Um, And again, I encourage you, if you do see this movie, literally go into any scene and apply the theory of, did a child write this? (laughs) (laughs) Did a child who understands nothing about the structure of, like, modern filmmaking, like, did he write this? Kind of like, I don't struggle at all in this movie, and I only get better. Like, kind of, you know, like, it's just... Do um, do you think, before you get into your rating not to bring up go for it do you think that the the problems with this movie if it's coming from someone who was just oscar nominated for best foreign film do you think that this is him not understanding english or do you think this is the studio studying the fuck out of a movie like this i only i only like they're Taking, they're like oh you know you don't understand english so this is how we make movies here in america and he's like no like oh no i just made an oscar nominated movie this is not how we should do things but well, he has no control or... yeah no i i think it's it's a combination of things we i said that jokingly because there are scenes where it's like it does sound like some of matthew mcconaughey's lines sound like poorly translated like have a nice apocalypse you know, kind of like it's just dumb. <laughs> and maybe like somebody who's watching like 80s movies would think like, oh, this is like how American film like sounds like mm-hmm. a bad guy sounds. I think we have too many cooks uh, because I think there's four or five writers. All like there's the the director, another guy from Denmark. And then there's like two dudes from the United States. Maybe it's just four, but I think, again, there's too many hands, mm-hmm. like, writing this. Mm-hmm. And um, and most definitely, I think anything Sony touches turns to shit. I think they have, like, very poor judgment with everything that they're wasn't... involved with. Oh, no. Logan is Fox. That's not Sony, right? Mm-mm. But it's like Ghostbusters 2. Like, you know, like, I can see the same people behind that being behind this. Well, I guess they were they were Spider-Man Homecoming, but that's also Marvel at the same time. Yeah. So. Anyway, that was just my thought of... I can just totally see this being a movie, yeah, that got... Like, you, you take someone oh, who, just, who just made, like, an amazing, like, Oscar-nominated film. Just so then, they can attach his name. And yep. it's it's the same thing with the Lord and Miller being attached to the uh, Han Solo film, where it's kind of like, let's take these really, like, acclaimed kind of guys and put them in this position and see how fucking far we can push them while putting their names on this project. Mm-hmm. And Lord and Miller were like, no fuck this you're changing everything that we had like go get fucking ron howard he'll do whatever you want for money you know like what has ron howard done recently that's been of worth a lot of producing i think Uh, yeah but directing but directing yeah (laughs) (laughs) um no yeah but i've said everything that i really need to say what the fuck is the crimson king i saw that graffitied everywhere Again, probably something that makes a lot Again, of sense. Again, something from the book. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Um, I do think Idris Elba is the best part of this movie. He's fun to watch. Really? Um, yeah. What I, would you I, I, What I would you so. say the best part of this movie is? Who I, mean, do you, I think the. Who do you think has the best performance in this movie? I don't think he he gives a bad performance. I think he's sorely underwritten as a character. They the all where he's are. not yeah. given much mm-hmm. to work with. Um, I I think the scenes where he's like in New York, yeah, I think are good performances from him. Mm-hmm. Where the writing is meeting, you know, some of his comedic abilities at the same time. But I think everywhere else, it's just kind of 
him being like, I'm a gunslinger, I'm Roland, I'm, <laughs> I'm moody, and I'm sad about my dad. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to bring some sort of positive into, like, this, like... <laughs> I think the two positives are Idris Elba has some scenes where he does okay, but again, Matthew McConaughey, one of the best actors of our time, can't even really make this work. Um, uh, again, the length of this movie, which is like an hour and a half, really works to an advantage to some extent i thought because even though there's not a lot of exposition um which is sorely needed um the pacing's pretty well um like i was talking about in that kind of like uh, idris elba shoot somebody from afar or whatever that was a cool set piece but my favorite set piece while watching this movie because i hadn't seen in trailers is dumb but it's when jake locks himself in the bathroom and then the two like you know cut face people or whatever Mm. kind of chase him down and it's kind of the only exciting part of the film for me really Um, just because it hasn't been spoiled by the trailers or yeah that and just i don't know i think it's still so early in the movie you kind of still have hope (laughs) (laughs) that's exactly what this movie was for me it was all hope in the beginning um yeah and I th- yeah, and everything else I've 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 already left it all out on the table. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a half finger. Um, if that says anything to people who listen to this podcast frequently, I feel like the only other thing I've given that at least this year, if not this whole podcast, is the circle. And I feel like this is the shallows from last year. True. But this is this is noted. You gave a zero. <laughs> yeah, but this is as equally just terrible as the circle, in my opinion. Just 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 to keep it in the realm of this year. This is like I don't know. It's in its own way, in its own genre. It's just as bad as the circle. Mm-hmm. Um, I might even say it's a little worse, but I'm not going to move it. You know, I'm not going to move the circle. I mean, I'm not going to move like the. It, I'm going to give it a half finger because the pacing was good. And at times I was like, ha, Idris Elba. Mm. And that's, that's about it. Yeah. So, uh, half finger. Uh, yeah. Out I, of five. Like, I, I agree. This is definitely an awful movie. And mm-hmm. I, like I've said, I think my, my main complaint is still the art direction. Right. And I guess maybe just also the direction of this movie. It's just, <laughs> there's so many bad choices that I see being made in the screenplay but then even if you're going to take like that bad screenplay, like you could make this a serviceable movie if you make it more visually appealing in certain areas. You know, like when they go to Midworld, like make Midworld like, you know, kind of beautiful to behold in its own way mm-hmm. or like pick better locations to shoot in other than just flat desert, boring mountain, boring forest that just looks like Earth somewhere. Like the best they can come up with is like an amusement, abandoned amusement park in like yeah. the woods. Right, like, yeah. There's just nothing that feels like distinctly like the Dark Tower, and that's kind of what you need for like a fantasy movie. You know, there's I, there's things you look mm-hmm. at in Harry Potter, and you're like, that's Harry Potter. There's things you look at in Star Wars or in Lord of the Rings or uh, Hunger Games or any of these other like big franchise building movies. And I don't know how they could put this movie out and expect there to be any kind of franchise to come out of this because there's mm-hmm. not even any real like iconography to this movie. Right. Like, there's no symbols or anything that people could get become like a fan of or get tattooed or you know be like excited about really in any way and then the same thing like applies to like the villains like the villains are not distinct there's only really the two characters as the heroes and the gunslinger thing is still kind of poorly explained like everything else in this movie and there's just nothing for us to really like attach on to um and the only things that i really can praise about this movie are the few scenes where Roland is in New York and I do think it is working on a a decent comedic level I think it's nailing the tone that we needed in the rest of this movie because it it's not an adult movie it's not a very dark movie at all even though some dark shit happens in it maybe too dark like the the two parents dying in the same movie um but like that tone that we have there in the New York movie like that's something that like that's what you need in like a blockbuster big 
uh, tentpole type production movie, especially if you're trying to market it to like kids and young adults and stuff like that. Like kids want to laugh even in like a movie that is cool and serious. They want to laugh at certain points, like all blockbuster movies that are marketed for that age point. There's still comic relief. There's a funny character. There's no funny characters in this. Like the, the kid's friend is awful. In this. He just, it's just like, Hey, where were you? Yeah. <laughs> cool. You want to go play video games or whatever? Like, I don't even know why that kid's just to go off on a tear here. I don't know why this kid's in this fucking movie, his friend. How is he he friends with this kid? He provides nothing to the movie. Like, Mm -hmm. he doesn't have his back about the bullying. He's just Mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, your drawings? Like, his only real redeeming quality is that he doesn't make fun of him for the drawings, which I don't know why he's getting made fun of for to begin with. They're just kind of mediocre drawings. Like, who gives a shit? Right. And then, like, he doesn't find out about the stuff being real. Like, that would have been another scene that I think we could, could... Because... They have the scene in the beginning where he, I forget exactly how he words it, but he's kind of like, uh, I don't think he says he believes it, but he's just kind of like, it's whatever. Like he accepts the drawings that uh, Jake is doing. And then we never have a scene coming back to him being like, hey, here's the gunslinger for my drawings. And like, this is real. And like, you know, maybe having this kid have some kind of reaction to all that stuff being real. Right. That never comes about. And then he never gets involved in the plot towards the end at all. So I don't know what his service like what, he's just kind of wasting screen time in this movie when we could have like sorely used that screen time to explain some things that really need to be explained in this mm-hmm. movie. So it's just a lot of wasted space. Um, yeah, like the art direction's bad. Like I said, the, I like that New York scene. And for some reason, when I, when I think back on this movie, part of me like wants to go watch it again. So I think there are some enjoyable elements to it, but I just feel like it's not fully realizing the potential of what's there. Right. And with some of the talent that's in this movie, like Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba, I don't think we're really getting what we could have got. So I'm going to go a little higher than you. I'm going to give it one finger. It's still a pretty bad movie, yeah. but I wasn't entirely bored. It's, it's at least the type of bad where you can almost be entertained by how bad it is. Like I was laughing at it yeah. and yeah. laughing with it. Yeah, throughout a lot of the movie mm. as opposed to like the circle where you weren't laughing at it or with it the entire time it was not funny and it was not funny to make fun of either. yeah so i'll go with one finger and um i'm gonna give it for pretty much the exact same reasons uh, a one i i really i like the beginning you know where there was kind of character development you thought it was going somewhere mm-hmm. and then um i like the new york scenes i i did laugh at some of those you know some of those scenes but besides that i was like i said halfway down the steps like right when the credits were starting <laughs> <laughs> so, did yeah, this have an end credit me. scene i didn't see anything on the wikipedia and i certainly did not stay to find mm-hmm. out no i don't think so i, I mean i didn't, didn't i didn't yeah <laughs> uh, i can't imagine i don't know again like if if they were following some of the models of like other like tent pole movies like the thing we're complaining about at the end, like you could have had Roland leave at the end, and then the post credit scene can be some sort of like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like, right, yeah. Maybe they're going to meet up again and he'll be part of the gunslingers in the future. Like, it doesn't need to be the exact ending of this movie. Yeah. yeah. It was almost like fan service is not the right word, but just, it, it just shows a lack of restraint. Yeah. In my opinion. But that's going to come out to 0.83 repeating, rounding down to a half finger. So among the worst of the year. (laughs) Rightfully so. Uh, If you agree or disagree, we'd love to hear your thoughts. So uh, you guys have been doing a pretty good job commenting on SoundCloud. So keep those coming in. Yeah, there's been a pretty big discussion, especially this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so keep it up. And I know... Uh, we've been frequently keeping up with it and discussing it right along with you guys. So, uh, yeah. If Where, we, if wherever you you're listening we're... or watching, SoundCloud, mm-hmm. YouTube, or you know, however you want to communicate with us, Facebook, Twitter, we'd love to continue the discussion, as we've been saying, about these movies. Mm-hmm. The episode airs this week that you're listening to it, but uh, it's out there forever, and we'd love to keep talking about it, no matter how old the episode. So I hit just, us up. I just responded to a comment of On Mad, Mad Max, Max Fury Road. Fourth episode. Yes. <laughs> And this is 94. I Four. supposed to be 94. So 90 episodes ago. 90 weeks ago. <laughs> Literally 90 weeks ago. All right. Uh, what do we do? What do we do at the end of these episodes? Uh, well, we can plug uh, the good old band. 
the the bread ad deliverance Mm -hmm. featuring mike king on gang vocals (laughs) yeah yeah definitely (laughs) is there a release date for the yeah i'm not 100 percent sure we'll post it um yeah Yeah. we're it's contingent to if mixing is completed at the end of this month so right we'll have an official release date it's gonna it's gonna be the beginning of september either the first or second week hopefully so i feel like that's a that's a classic music release time like right at the beginning of like september right as fall is coming yeah right yeah (laughs) it's a good music time yeah yeah get to sit inside and listen to music so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so definitely check them out bright eyed deliverance again and they're on facebook youtube soundcloud all that good stuff i believe and Mike Moserino's solo stuff on SoundCloud, if it's still up there. <laughs> the SoundCloud still exists, still exists at this point. If it doesn't, you can't be listening to this podcast anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> until we migrate somewhere else. Uh, and for us, as always, you can find us at HowManyFingersPodcast.com. You'll find links to everything. iTunes, where you can leave us a rating or a review. Or subscribe to us for more episodes. Uh, we got a link to our mailing list that you can subscribe to. We'll send you emails every time we post a new episode or big podcast news. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube to watch our videos. This one should be crisp, clean quality. Yeah, this is our Hoping first that these time. files don't get corrupted, otherwise it's going to be the GoPro, yeah. which would cut out halfway through. <laughs> yeah, tell us how the new... Uh, we're borrowing Jordan's camera right now. So. Sony something. Tell us how this looks. Sorry for bashing Sony the company as we film on their cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Two different apartments. <laughs> uh yeah so subscribe there uh again as always we've got merch still koozie t-shirts koozies stickers all three in a package deal for 11.99 at howmanyfingerspodcast.bigcartel.com and as always there's an amazon link and an itunes link on our website click on either anything you purchase within the next 24 hours within each respective browser window uh we'll get a nice cut of that easy way to support the podcast without going too far out of your way and uh Check out a review of Detroit next week, and then Okja the the week following that. Okja, <laughs> that's right. I'm not being racist. That's how she says it. No. In the movie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming on, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having us. Best, guys. best of luck me. with Sorry. <laughs> thanks for us. They were all here I, in spirit. I, I, am, I am more than one person. <laughs> Signing out for How Many Fingers of Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Joe. I'm Mike. There's two Mikes. There's two Mikes. <laughs> Actually, there's three, but. <laughs> <laughs>